this is obsidian a s m a don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos And he's done that by acquiring Goku's body in an alternate timeline, a lot like our friend Captain Ginyu uh, from the Ginyu Force. So, in this next installment, it is the Transcendent. Side, the fate of the future, Goku, Vegeta, and future Trunks take on the mighty fusion of Samas in an epic final confrontation of good versus evil. When the dust settles and they return to their present, the Z fighters face even greater challenges. A baseball game, grudge match between gods, and a mysterious attempt on Goku's life are just a couple of events keeping our heroes in top form. But as quickly as one calamity ends, another is just around the corner. The tournament of power is finally. So, as always, we will start off with looking inside. Oh, it's a mess. Looking a little bit worse for wear. And Goku. So, episode 16. Showdown, the miraculous power of unyielding warriors. So, at the start of the episode, uh, Goku launches this incredible full power Kamehameha to try to injure a merged Samas, who I'm just going to call Samas from now on. is successful in injuring his arms before using his Kaioken technique to knock his opponent down when he grabs his foot. But, uh, due to the fact that Goku has taken all of his energy and put it in that Kamehameha, So yeah, 
asks Vegeta, who reluctantly agrees. Um, but they kind of retconned the uh, I guess the forever. Um, however, Gawas explains that actually, if it doesn't involve the Supreme Kai, the fusion only lasts for one hour. So, Vegito is born again uh, and starts to power up to Super Saiyan Blue and dubs himself Vegeta Blue. Samas continues. Um, yeah. After the survivor group uh, with Bulma and Future Mai, they end up repairing the time machine. And uh, Trunks gets his broken sword, and that reminds him of Tapion, and inspires him to keep fighting. Uh, so he ends up arriving just on the battlefield uh, at the time that Vegito's fusion abruptly ends because of the immense power of the fusion. So we saw this in Dragon Ball GT, where the Metamoran style of fusion with the dance only lasted a uh, set amount of time because uh, Goku and Vegeta were so powerful, so it should have been like an hour with that, but it only lasted like 20 minutes or something. So, this is where Trunks starts gathering energy from all living things on Earth and creates his own spirit bomb, which is quite interesting. Um, and he channels that into the sword. Uh, and he uses that to cut through some us uh, and split him in half. So episode seven, uh, 67, forgive me, with new hope in his heart. Farewell, Trunks. So now that Samas has been cut in half, he expresses his disbelief um, of being defeated by mere mortals and disintegrates. Uh, but, as always, that isn't the end of Samas, who now because he has transcended his physical form, is trying to merge with the universe itself. And this would create infinite Samas. Um, so infinite Samas starts wiping out everyone on Earth, uh, with only Goku and his friends remaining. Samas continues to spread through all space and time. Goku at this point is gearing up for another fight and tries to, I don't know how he plans to take on the, like the entire universe, <laughs> but he, uh, he looks for a centipede, doesn't find one, but instead finds the button that Zeno gave him. So he summons the future timelines, Grand Zeno. Goku quickly explains what's going on. Uh, and that leads to Grand Zeno erasing the entire future multiverse. Um, with even 
the Supreme Kai is returning to the past with Goku uh, and the others escaping using the time machine as Samas ceases to exist. Finally, now that they're all in the present, Goku and Future Trunks return to what remains of the future timeline to retrieve Future Grand Zeno. So along with Goku comes Shin, our Supreme Kai, and Zeno. Uh, to give future Zeno the promised uh, playmate. Weiss at this point suggests to future Trunks and future Mai to travel to a point in their timeline just before Samas became a threat where he can be removed by Beerus which makes me wonder, why didn't they do this in the first place? But apparently, we had that, didn't we, where they couldn't assassinate him before he became invincible, because that wish made him invincible throughout all of his life or something like that. So I don't really know how they would do it now. But anyway... would have to coexist with the new timelines version of themselves, but they accept and depart for the new future, and that is almost the end of this arc with Samas. But in episode 68, come forth Shenron whose wish will be granted. Bulma has been attempting to secretly build her own time machine, but however, she needs a rare crystal that can only currently be found in the Earth's core. So in order to keep her activities a secret, not one. <coughs> um, Goku's gathering the Dragon Balls from what I remember to revive King Kai. But Beerus and Whis arrive on Earth uh, and that kind of forces Bulma to take them to a seafood restaurant to keep them in the dark. So while she's in the restaurant, Goku summons Shenron to provide the wish to resurrect King Kai. But along with him were Android 18, Master Roshi, Oolong, Trunks, and Goten. Um, they all start squabbling over whose wish is going to be asked. And they do all allow Gohan one of the wishes to heal the baby Pan of her fever, which seems a little bit uh, of a waste because that's what modern medicine is for. Uh, and then Bulma arrives uh, and starts to convince everybody to not ask their wish. she convinces Goku to travel to the center of the earth to get this crystal for her in return for the last wish. Um, but, sadly, Beerus is aware of the uh, plan all of a sudden to use the crystal, or time crystal, to build their own time machine or Bulma's time machine. Effectively, uh, he 
destroys the crystal and all trace of the time machine's existence from Bomber's lab uh, as a kind of minor punishment. So, yeah, the Dragon Balls then scatter, which Episode 69 is Goku versus Arale, uh, a ridiculous battle will end the world. Vegeta, Bulma and Trunks are at a science competition hosted by our own Mr. Satan. Goku is there working as security. the award for his reality machine uh, that basically conjures any item uh, that you can think of. But the ceremony is interrupted by his nemesis, Dr. Mashirito. Mashirito, yeah. forces Vegeta to try to stop Arale, um, but he can't because she's so powerful and has got weird physics. <laughs> um, Goku obviously recognizes Arale from when they met in the Dragon Ball series and transforms into Super Saiyan Blue with both equally matched in power. Fears that the fight could destroy the world and uses the collective thoughts of the viewing audience with the reality machine to create a mass of delicious food. Obviously, Beerus gets wind of that um, and comes and obliterates Dr. Mashirito. Um, and he's just about to do the same. to relieve himself, allowing Dr. Norimaki and Arale to return home, uh, but not without agreeing to fight Goku again in the future. Obviously, this is a crossover episode with uh, another one of Akira Toriyama's stories or series that he's created. So that was nice. And then we move into episode 70. Uh, Shampa's challenge. This time, a baseball game. So the Japanese love baseball. Uh, and this basically a game all around that. Um, it's kind of like a slimmed down version of the tournament that happened before, but it also is an opportunity for Shamba to help himself to Earth's food. Um, the difference is this time there's no hit or frost, obviously, because frost is a bad guy. Um, so Vegeta and Goten take their spots in the Universe 16. Uh, Yamcha also takes part in the in the game, obviously, with him being the only one that used to be a professional baseball player. Um, but Yamcha gets injured several times uh, by stealing base, but ultimately being safe. Uh, 
Chris and Shamba, which, you know, could have escalated to a reality-breaking fight if Weiss and Vardos hadn't intervened, intervened and called the baseball game off. and Shampa. So that means that Beerus's team ultimately won, thanks to Yamcha. Uh, and Shampa wasn't very happy with that, obviously. Uh, starts to get his team to prepare for a rematch. And that's the episode. Again, a little bit of filler. Episode 71. Goku dies, an assassination that must be executed. So Goten and Gohan uh, notice that Goku's been acting weird uh, as they spend the day for some reason following him, uh, leading to Gohan asking him why. Asked why, Goku admits that someone wants to kill him, which again is kind of like commonplace throughout this series. Nothing special. Um, elsewhere, Vegeta, training with Whis, uh, notices that Whis is hiding something. Elsewhere in Universe 6, Hit has just assassinated a crime boss and then learns that his next target is Goku. Goku senses Hit coming and flies off to a remote area where no one could get caught up in their fight. Hit arrives. Basically boasts that he's got more than his time skip technique. Um, the fight begins, and yet again, Goku can't land an attack on Hit, who is uh, who basically dies, as in Goku dies. From a single invisible blow to the heart. It's always the heart with Goku. Uh, and he drops to the floor just as Piccolo go on and Goten arrive. Episode 72 Will he strike back the unseen killing technique? So Goku apparently can't be healed by Piccolo. His heart is jump-started um, by the energy attack that he'd launched mid-collapse, landing on him again. It's so kind of like a uh, defibrillator. he's realized that Hit's technique is an invin invisible, pardon me, energy blast. So, the two of them begin their fight again. Nearby, Shamba and Vados are watching the fight. Uh, with Vados serving as a kind of like intermediary for Hit's client. used the energy that he would use for his time skips to kind of create a pocket dimension. Um, the two of them are then joined by Vegeta, Beerus, and Moise. Um, as Goku 
figures out that there's a pocket dimension and uses a Kamehameha uh, to destroy it and cause a double knockout. In the aftermath of the fight, Goku reveals himself to be its client. That's right. He hired his own assassin. And Vados helping to set everything up so Goku could find it at his best. It leaves for now, but does say he'll be back, or thinks he'll be back, because the job. Great Saiyaman film adaption. So, at the start of the episode, we see Jacko, the galactic patrolman, who is on his lunch break, but he accidentally loses uh, this alien named Watagashi, who uh, is kind of like a so that sets it all up. On Earth, however, Go on and Fidel uh, learn that Mr. Satan is in a new superhero film titled Great Saiyaman vs. Mr. Satan. So the family visit the set and are introduced to the leading actor, Barry Khan starts to flirt with Fidel uh, in front of the film crew. Go on. Uh, at this point, decides to serve as Barry's stunt double to try to impress his daughter Pan. Uh, Barry, keen obviously on Fidel, is happy with the idea because it could embarrass and potentially harm Gohan. Obviously, he's not aware that Gohan uh, can just use his Super Saiyan powers to easily deal with the role and his acrobatics and his martial arts training and all that kind of stuff. So he puts the suit on again uh, to fight against bank robbers from his past. Um, but that's where Watagashi reappears as one of the bank robbers. Uh, but go on, can't finish him off as he escapes into a near sewer. Bulma, at this point, makes some excuses for go on as the film grew almost deduce that Gohan is in fact the real great Saiyaman. Um, and his identity is revealed or uh, figured out by one of the co-stars of the film, Coco, uh, who basically says, fly me around the city reveal your identity. Identity. Uh, it's at this point that Jacko attacks the Great Salmon because he assumes that Gohan is now Watagashi's host. Leading into episode 74, for my beloved ones, Great Saiyaman. So, um, Gohan manages to convince Jacko that he is not the host of Watagashi. Um, and learns from Jacko that Watagashi. 
how she enhances the inner darkness of their host. Um, Coco basically is being used by Barry to try to incriminate Gohan um, in a scandalous situation uh, for a tabloid photographer. Uh, but Coco doesn't want to go through with it and tries to actually get going to avoid the photographer but Barry uh, took the pictures and tries to escaping. Stop taking lunch breaks. Episode 75 is Goku and Krillin back to the old familiar training ground. Uh, and this is just an episode where Goku is basically just uh, looking for somebody to train with but everybody's busy. So Goten says, why don't you go and train with Krillin, who is currently still a police officer. Um, so Goku goes to try and find him. Krillin at this point is in the middle of a shootout with a pair of burglars, uh, and he gets grazed by a bullet, but Goku arrives and easily disarms them. secret technique that can in 
increase his strength. On the island, Goku and Krillin meet Fortune Teller Papa, who Roshi recruited to help relay their progress. The two of them proceed into the forest, encountering familiar enemies emerging from a heavy fog. And then episode 76 is called Conquer the Terrifying Foes. Krillin's fighting spirit rebounds. At this point, Android 18 and Marin are at Master Roshi's house, um, who proceeds to tell them that Baba uh, is with Krillin and Goku who've entered the Forest of Terror, uh, where the two of them are facing off against constructs based on their memories. Goku is easily able to deal with them, but Krillin is having troubles with the illusions of Tamarine, Frieza, Dabura, and the evil Martian Boo, who all overcome with fear and attempts to leave before uh, Goku finds a tree blocking their escape and they get separated. Krillin gets surrounded by the illusions and he eventually realizes that they're feeding off his energy. So he composes himself, remembers Roshi's training, and calms himself down, which weakens the illusions. As a final challenge, Fortune Dalababa summons the illusion of Super Shenron, and that traps Goku. tries to use the Flying Nimbus to find Krillin. Krillin, on the other hand, quickly frees Goku as the two use a combined Kamehameha Blast to destroy the illusion, uh, which causes the Miracle Herbs to sprout up. Master Roshi's house with the bags full of the herbs. And Roshi admits that there actually wasn't a secret technique. But Krillin did get the intended lesson and regained his confidence. So Krillin returns home. Android 18 shave his head so he can resume his martial arts training as Goku arrives to spar. Episode 77 is Let's Do It Grand Zeno, the universe's best tournament. Effectively, Goku realizes at the outset, having been ambushed by some robbers, that he's got rusty because uh, he hasn't had a decent challenge. So he tries to go and train with Goten uh, and with Whis after buying a treat to win his services. They all head to the Council Court building where Bulma reveals she's pregnant with her and Vegeta's second child. Goku heads out alone as Goten remains behind to train with Trunks, and Vegeta declines the offer to train to remain by Bulma's side, while Beerus expresses disappointment over Goku during his training with Whis. He threatens the same to drop the subject concerning the martial arts tournament Grand Zeno wants to hold. listen, and instead uses Zeno's button to head to his realm, where both the present Grand Zeno and the future Grand 
Fancy now. that are unfit for the tournament of power will be erased. So in the first match, Margin Boo faces off against the wolf-like Basil of the Ninth Universe's trio of danger. And that, in a nutshell, and the longest 
stretch of episodes. So we'll have some fun next time. Thank you for watching, and thank you for sticking with this series. Uh, I love all your comments. I love all your likes and hello to all my new subscribers. At the time of recording, we're at 864. Crazy. Um, I know I've been churning out uh, quite a lot of video game and Dragon Ball content uh, in recent months, but I am going to start looking to diversify it a bit more, get some more traditional tingles and in there. So thank you for sticking with me, being patient. It's been hectic this uh, Christmas period, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I hope you've all had a wonderful uh, Christmas period, whether you celebrate or you don't. Um, and regardless, I hope that you've had a opportunity spend it with the people that mean the most to you. With all that being said, we're fast approaching 2024 and I can't wait to spend it all with you right here and see where this adventure takes us. One of you commented spend some more time uh, and have more direct conversations with me and each other. Uh, and I think this was Riptide who commented, but basically the idea of a Discord server. If that is something that you would all like, I would happily so you'd probably have to put up with me playing lots of World of Warcraft and uh, Ark Survival Ascended. But there you go. Uh, I'd happily do so. So if you do want that, and you think Riptide has come up with a great suggestion, 